Hello right, guys, welcome back to Flagship. And the segment before, you saw the interview with Ya Ya Ying. Is she mm. lovely? She's so beautiful. She's yeah. great. And you know what? She'd be the type that I would take to movies, not you two. I'm sorry. Yeah. Actually, it's what? not our loss. Yeah, we'll go on our Oh no, I thought you sound like you'd be disappointed, but no. No, it's not our loss. Sorry, <laughs> Well, I... since we're on a topic of movies, I'm just wondering, what's your favorite movies? I have so many favorite movies, it always changes. Yeah. But recently I just went back to watch an old movie, Primal Fear. That is a good movie. Explain the plot first. Okay, so in Primal Fear, there is this uh, one guy played by Edward Norton, and he kills like a priest. So then they take him to jail, and then they're going through the, it's the court case of trying to figure out whether he's right or wrong, because he obviously is the one that did it. There, all evidence points that he's the one that killed the priest. And his lawyer starts to believe that maybe it wasn't him, and instead maybe he has like a mental disorder. And so the whole movie goes on trying to prove that Edward Norton has a mental disorder, but it turns out at the end, well, at the end there's like don't, a little twist. Uh, don't, don't, ruin don't, don't ruin the movie but for everyone else. For me, okay, so this movie has Edward Norton and Richard Gere in it. Yes. But for me, I watched it the first time with the cliffhanger, and, or the surprise ending, and I was like, <gasps> oh exactly. my god! But then I watched it a second time, and because I already knew the surprise, it didn't really do it for me. You know what really? I mean? I still, I don't know, I just love the acting in it. Because mm. it was just, I don't know what I managed to play both like, the sweet, yeah. innocent guy, and also like this sort of a like... Psycho. Yeah, yeah a psycho. But you, know, but you know, for me, <laughs> well for you, Barbara, it's because, well you've already found out the yeah, twist, right? But exactly. for me, if, if I keep watching that film twice, if I like the film in a way, it doesn't matter about the twist. I think the plot and you know. It's like you know, how you can watch a Harry really Potter good. movie over and yeah. over again. Yeah. yeah. Like some movies, you can watch it, you know, over and over again, yeah. and you'll find something different every time. Yeah. Like Pulp Fiction, for example. Yeah. You know, Quentin Tarantino. And I mean, every time I watch it, there's I pick out something different. Like. Yeah, because you, you start concentrating on other things that, yeah. that, you, that missed out on the first time round. The last yeah. time I watched, I realized that there's this part where Uma Thurman is describing like a television show. And it's actually the plot for Kill Bill that she's describing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. Which she, is yeah, really she, she cool. Yeah, she's talking about the story of Kill Bill. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And then it's like he makes the movie Kill Bill like years yeah. later. So cool. Yeah, but that guy, he's quite with his head, with his mind. He's a little. Yeah. You can't really figure him out though, can you? But and he's always put himself in the movie every time. Yeah, he loves to put himself he's just, in movies. He just like be in the movie and then just get killed <laughs> every movie, every scene. What's your so, favorite yeah. movie, Ben? Well, well, my favorite one is <laughs> called... Hey, girls, listen! Oh, you asked me the question, so please oh, listen to my answer. Sorry, we often get sidetracked. <laughs> this is very rude. How, how's it going, Ben? They do it to me all the time. <laughs> Wait, no, seriously, <laughs> seriously. I'm just kidding. Okay, okay. what's your favorite oh, movie? My movie is 12 Angry Men. Oh, cool! It's about 12 guys who's oh, like court case as well. But um, in this time is when they they have to be in the jury room to decide whether the boy is guilty or not. So the plot is like, um, there's like a murder that can happen. That the boy killed, you know, a person, and then um, these twelve people have to decide the fate of the boy. So the the eleven of them, they were actually against the boy, like he was definitely like, you know, murderer. And then this one guy, he's actually tried to convince everyone that mm. the boy is innocent. I don't want to ruin it for you, but it's really, really good film. That's very interesting. Yeah. And it's it's very popular, like in the fifties or so. Yeah, this is a movie that you know is much talked about, but. Has it ever won an Oscar? I don't no. know. No, no, it's not. I think most great film in the past, or now even, mm -hmm. you know, they missed out on the Oscars. I don't, I don't understand why. I think, I think the I taste, the, ta the taste of the Oscar is it's varied every year. So the standards of it is changing all no, the time. No, I think it's True. prejudice because it's the people who pick it. Because I mean, Christopher Nolan has never won an Oscar. I can't believe he never won That's an true. Oscar. So he directed like Memento, the Batman yeah. trilogy. Yeah. The Batman. Exactly. He's, these are great movies that everyone... Like, I mean, yeah. Batman is considered one of the greatest movies of the 21st century. Yeah. Well, The Dark Knight definitely was the greatest one, yeah. No, but seriously, okay. what is that? I mean, it's, it's quite depressing, really, because... Well, the one that I can't get over is that Leonardo DiCaprio has never won an Oscar. I can't believe he won an Oscar. But I don't understand why, because he's just like... He's one of the greatest... He's consistent, yeah. man. He's one of the greatest actor, and all his movie is like, it's amazing. I Actually, he didn't yeah. even go to the Oscars last year because Quentin Tarantino, um, you know, won an award for Django Unchained, and yeah, yeah. Leonardo was in it, and he didn't even show up. You know, to win an Oscar, sometimes there's like you know a downside to it. Apparently, I don't know that much. For about the it. ladies, apparently. Oh, is downside. it? Is it it's only for the ladies? For, it's just for the ladies. What is it? 
There's apparently this uh, Oscar love curse where if a won one of, if the actresses have won either best actress or best supporting actress within a year they will get a divorce. For example, Reese Witherspoon, she won an Oscar for um, her movie Walk the Line. Oh, right. And then she ended up, within the year, she ended up divorcing Ryan Phillippe because he was cheating on her. Oh. And there's and another there's one. So many, there's so many other actresses that well, this has happened believe. to. This, this is what I don't want to, that's why he didn't turn up. Leonardo. He yeah, doesn't want to have a lot. Oh, he doesn't want an Oscar, man. Yeah. <laughs> but speaking of awards, you know, there was just recently an exhibition in Bangkok for some of the film students at Mahidol University. Oh yeah, they had the thesis exhibition. Exactly. So I mean, you know, the Oscar is the next step up for them, obviously. <laughs> well, hopefully. Let's check out the skill. <laughs> Entertainment Media Exhibition is a showcase of Mahidon's international department's um, student film and animation and television work. The students have about six months to put together um, a professional level uh, short film or short animation or short television piece to attempt to get into the industry after graduation. Uh, my name is uh, Ajahn Norachai uh, Nantakit. I'm a Korean Rhea chairperson at uh, Fine Applied Art at Mahidon University International College. Uh, as a chairperson, you know, I basically overlook on the two programs. Basically, we have one is called Communication Design Program, and the other one, which you know, we have a show today, is called Entertainment Media Program, which has uh, three different majors. One is animation, second is uh, film production, and third is television production. Hi, my name is Jonathan and this is my movie Charlie's Garden. My movie is about a, an old man who wants to plant his garden, but he has a heart disease and so he writes a letter to his son explaining that he cannot do it anymore. Open up, Johnny! What do you want? Johnny, open it up. We've got a warrant. Open the door or I'll bust it down. Get off my property! Charlie! Charlie! Open up, Charlie! Hi, I'm Amy. Um, Amy Provost from America. My film it's called Crombia. It's about two little kids who take this adventure um, into a secret world where they meet um, a scary wolf creature and like that. It's very fantasy. Um, I really like films like um, I, I love uh, kids stories like children's stories like I grew up listening to uh, watching movies like Little Red Riding Hood, Snow White and like that and so I wanted to incorporate with some of that with some of like adult type of things. So it's a mixture of childhood play with some adult uh, themes as well. I can't. He will keep you safe. Please be careful with him. Well, for me, I think uh, 
Thai Thai director is very unique in a way. You know, uh, we have we we have a lot of good director out there already professionally, and with a new young bat who's going out. You know, I think. Uh, at least they, they see that you know the people in the professional fields you know how, how much they're successful and hopefully they can follow that path. I actually think it's passion. You, if you don't have passion, um, there's really nothing. I mean, you can teach things. You can teach skills. You can teach um, how to use equipment. You can't. You, you try to teach passion. Uh, you show students a lot of things that you hope will get them excited and uh, get them interested in, in film, but it, it's really passion. Up next on Flagship, Sarah talks one-on-one -on -one with the founder of the Nine Film Festival, Mr. Brian Bennett, and find out his story of how it came to be.